Okay, so for this lecture, what we're going to be doing is taking uh, some of the animals that we did studies of. You can either use the animals that you previously did for your study assignment, or you can do new ones. It's up to you. But we're going to be making a chimeric creature, or chimeric. And what that means is uh, a chimera is a mythological creature um, that has the head of a lion and the tail of a snake head and a goat head on its back. It's basically just a bunch of these creatures that are mashed together. Okay, so what we're going to be doing, we're not going to be making a chimera, but we are going to be making a chimeric creature, which means we're going to take the elements from three different animals and morph them together to make something new. And we're going to use it doing using the creatures that we did studies of so that we have a we can make a solid drawing. So we're not going to be taking this all the way to full painting. Later, if you want to do that, you can. But for this assignment, we're just focusing on the drawing for now. So I did some studies earlier um, of some animals. I have a mouse, I have this thorny lizard, and I have a macaw. Okay? And I'm going to do a creature design that's incorporating these three animals into one design. Okay? And the point of this exercise and of this assignment is so that you can understand um, how to incorporate your studies into your creature design without just redrawing the animal, okay? Without just redrawing whatever it is you already studied, okay? So um, what I'm thinking is uh, I want to start out with the body being sort of similar to this mouse. I like the shape of the body and I want to emulate that in my design. Now, when you're doing this, what we're trying to do is not, uh, we don't just want to put like a mouse head on a lizard body with macaw wings, right? That's not what we're going for. What we're doing is trying to create a creature that feels uniform, it feels like the same all the way through, um, but just has different elements, right? We want the skin on this thing to feel the same throughout the whole entire body, right? Unless maybe it has feathers in some places or something like that. But we don't just want it to, you know, feel out of place or unrealistic, okay? So I'm going to start out by loosely sketching um, the body of this mouse. And using what you learned from your study as well as what you know from anatomy, you can kind of place in your head where certain parts of the main structure or body are, okay? So you can imagine the rib cage in here. Um, I'm imagining the spine goes along like this up here, and then down here, you can see where our rib cage would be. Which would put the hips back here, and then the legs. And I'm just going in really lightly, okay? Bring up my brush size just a little bit. All right, so I'm working the body in here. It's looking pretty decent so far. And I'm going to start blocking in the head. Now for the head, I want to have it have a head that is kind of reminiscent of the of the macaw that I did. Um, I like that look and that shape, and so I'm going to give it a similar face. I'm not going to put any feathers on it because what I'm going to do for the skin texture is give it uh, the texture and scales of the lizard that we did. I want it to be a reptilian type of creature. Okay, so I'm working this in here, adding the beak. Okay, that looks good. Let's get this lower beak in here. And if you need to look up more reference, you know, say you're working on this and uh, the angle that you're trying to get it drawn at or the position they're in, uh, your study didn't quite help you cover that, then totally look up more reference, you know. Go get a picture, go Google it, go look on Pinterest, find something that uh, looks like what you're trying to achieve and use that for your reference. Okay, there we go. And 
And I want to push this head back into the body more so it reminds me more of the mouse that we did. Okay. And for the ears, let's give him a let's give him some mouse ears. I think that would be cool. Let's make his beak smaller too first because oops. My selection tool. Because it's feeling a little large right now. Don't want to draw fur because thinking about his skin texture, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just getting the shape in, the general placement of things. So, let's work that in. Look at that, a little bigger. I kind of like how the mouse has huge eyes. Want to add that in here. Okay. Clean up some of this line a little bit as we go yeah let's see maybe we can throw some of these ears in here and let's see how it looks mm, nope I don't like that at all maybe he won't have ears I'll just have you know like parrot ears we'll see we can add it we can go in later when we're done and add some more if we want to Okay. I think we need to bring his whole head down lower. Like so. Really give him that hunched over kind of mouse type feel. And I really want to get the shape of this beak right. So I'm not going to hesitate to erase it and go over it again if I need to. Really want to. I think what part of the problem is is it needs to feel more like it really follows right into the top of his skull. I think that looks better. Okay. Cool. It's coming along all right. His eye still doesn't quite feel right. I'm gonna go ahead and erase it and try and draw that in there again. Remember, you want to be thinking about the eyes, like I mentioned before. Eyes are a three D shape. Okay, they're not just a a circle, right? They're a sphere. So you gotta think about the angle that they're gonna be viewed at and how that's going to affect the eyelids wrapping around them and the overall shape of it. It's an important thing you wanna keep in mind as you're drawing the eye. All right, so it's looking pretty good. Let's come over here and work on the his back, back end. Those little feet that's going to come down. All right. Looking pretty good. I'm going to bring his face back in further so it's a uh, a little bit flatter, like that. There we go. Okay. And I think I need to make his eye bigger and 
his beak and chin smaller. Yeah, I think that looks better. Okay. I'm liking that. And I think another thing that I like about the mouse is how his head kind of just like blends into his, uh, just follows into the rest of his body. There's not like a hard line where the top of his head is and it, the rest ends or begins, you know? So let's put that kind of element in there. We'll get his feet in. Now looking at this mouse, uh, their fur kind of obscures a lot of their anatomy. It can make it hard to see, but if you look up a skeleton of a mouse, uh, they're just like a normal quadruped, right? They have the same joints in the same places. Um, their body shape is the same. It just can be difficult to see that with all the fur on top. And if you need to, when you're doing a study or your creature design, go ahead and draw the, uh, the anatomy underneath right do that sketch that first really loose anatomical drawing and then you can go back in and add what you need to on top of it you know the rest of the fleshy part okay I'm really trying to figure out where his uh, his front legs are gonna go and so I'm gonna come back later to do that and for now I'm just gonna move on to the tail I'm imagining this is a, a more like a lizard tail. Okay. So let's come back to his front legs now. Imagining, let's work on his back leg first and we can get a placement for whether it's supposed to be planted on the ground. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make that a little smaller. If you are doing this digitally, uh, man, take advantage of that lasso tool. It will really help you get your proportions cleaned up right and uh, it saves you a lot of time with having to erase instead of just redrawing it. Because erasing takes a lot longer than just moving it around and keeping the original work you had and simply giving it a new a new shape. So I think what we need is to be able to see his other foot, uh, his other back foot, which would be showing from the other side instead of uh, just this one. I'm trying to get some of these wrinkles in here because he doesn't have any fur on him on this one. I really want to be able to portray that. And then his other back foot would be back here. go and then let's get his front legs in here I'm gonna imagine
imagine that he just kind of holds him up here close to his body and he mostly walks on uh, two legs. Like that. I like the way that looks. Okay, so we got that in here. Now let's add, uh, let's bring his first. I'm gonna kind of readjust his tail a little bit. There we go. And go ahead and get this lined up all the way again. We'll make him a little bit bigger too. So we can see what we're doing better. All right. So, really quick. All right, it's looking pretty good. Um, let's clean up some of this a little bit more and get the proportions in there where we want them better. Make sure everything is in perspective correctly and is lined up where we would or wouldn't be able to see it. It's like this foot, for example, would be a little bit further up and farther back, okay. And then this other hand, it's pretty messy in here, but we're going to go back in and clean it up. But this other hand would be moved over as well. Like that. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. Some of these scribbly lines. All right, so some things I want to add. I want to boost up this forehead a little bit because I like that shape. Uh, get this hand in here more clearly. Same with this one as well. Okay, so let's start adding some of the uh, 
the texture and scales that we're going to want to have on this guy. So I'm going to turn my mouse off for now. And we'll leave my bird on so I can see his patternings and stuff I'm going to do later. But uh, he has, so the, the lizard has these ridges that run along his back and his head. And uh, along these ridges, he has these spikes that kind of make up the pattern he has going on. And that's really the part that I want to emulate. And then also along his stomach, he has kind of these studs or uh, spiny thorns that I want to get in here too. I'm going to try and add. Okay. So in this step, I'm going to also work in uh, some of the uh, patterns that I see on the parrot that I want to add. Okay, so around his eye, this really dark line that comes up over here. These pieces. Imagining it comes down here and his throat is pretty dark and that will be that'll be scaly as well Okay Perfect I'm imagining around here it's pretty dark. Okay. We'll get this in here, this big dark shape as well. Clean that up really quick. Perfect. All right, now let's start getting some of these textures. So down here on his stomach, he has these little spiky things going on. I wanna get those in there. And then uh, along his leg, it also comes through and has these uh, these spikes. Go ahead and erase some of these wrinkles that aren't working right now. Okay. Okay, and, I, and I'm just always scanning my eyes across. I notice on the lizard that I, uh, I kind of like some of these stripes that come down from his, from his lower jaw. See if have, that works, if I add that in here, how it looks. I think it looks all right. We can go ahead and leave it for now and see if we want to keep it later. Keep adding in these little thorns he's got all over. Okay.
looks pretty good. Notice that there's a little bit of this hard edge on the lizard where there's this defined line between the top and the and the side kind of. I really like that shape, so I'm gonna work that in there. Really quick, let's adjust this and line him up. He's looking a little bit uh, skewed. It's better. All right, now let's start working in some of these larger, larger spikes he's got going on. Um, maybe on the top of his head, we want to incorporate some of these scale patterns he has. really help us understand that this guy's a reptile um, not just a some sort of thorny bird but he has a uh, scales on his head you know all right that looks good now do we want to do these horns I don't think so I think we just want it to kind of blend into uh, the rest of his body Okay, let's go ahead and start adding the these bigger spikes then. Alright, now I'll go back in and erase some of these lines. Okay. Do this row now. perfect Let's work some of these lines back into here it's looking pretty cool so far a little spiky fella all right let's get some more of these spikes under here under his chin Okay, and then we'll work on his tail well, really quick. I'm just gonna maybe touch up some of these spots up here on his head. Really hit that scale texture in there on his face where he has his big old plates as well because really want to sell the whole reptile aspect of it. It's a part that I really like. Okay. Little small bumps in there.
Okay. I like that. And then let's just suggest a few more because it's looking a little bit empty up in here. Looking a little empty up in here. All right. And then we'll do his tail. So that's looking pretty good. I'd say we're just about done. I'm just going to go in and clean up a few more spots. Last minute textures and details in here. I'm gonna darken up his beak. All right, cool. Then we'll do the top half. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with my eraser real small, get in some of these crack textures that I wanted in here. Okay. Get a few more wrinkles in around the eyes. Alright, and I would say that we can call that good. So, for just a sketch, um, this is about the level you want to take it to. If you want, you can uh, use this later and go ahead and paint it. Um, but for this assignment, this is all you got to do. Um, and yeah, post this on the Facebook group, guys. Show us what you're doing. We want to see it. So, um, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. and. 
I will see you in the next lecture. Are you looking for even more content on how to become a digital artist? Then check out some of my online courses. There are over 50 hours of in-depth content, and they cover a range of topics from creature design to light and color, and from character design to digital painting. You'll gain access to a private Facebook group for students only, where you can stay motivated and get feedback on your work. Plus, I provide fully responsive support throughout all of my courses, and I offer a 100% no questions asked money back guarantee. So normally my courses range from $100 to $200, but subscribers can take any of them, anytime, any course, for only $12, and once you buy it, you own it for life. There's no time limits, no subscriptions, anything like that. So if you want to show your support and become a better artist in the process, then use the link in the description, or just use promo code YTDiscount on any of my courses. So appreciate you guys. Have a good one.